If you're a fan of the Donut SMP, you've probably seen clips of Dr. Donut on YouTube. You have to pick a spot where there's no evidence of someone being... Not true. That's just not true. You're guaranteed to be put in a random spot where other players have been before. This is just not true. No, the RTP is fully random. The only thing that's, like, different about RTP is that it doesn't go, you don't go in water, and I think that's it. What if I told you RTP isn't actually random? Dr. Donut says that the RTP command is fully random, but I needed to put that to the test, so I RTP'd over 10,000 times to discover the truth. What I find will completely change the way this command is used. But first, what even is RTP? On the server, players can use this simple command to get teleported in a random location on the map so they can get away from spawn quickly. So now it was time to get started. I decided that if I wanted to be able to teleport so many times, I would need to make a mod to collect the data for me. After hours of debugging and testing, the first version was ready. Alright, so here's how the mod works. I'm just gonna start it. Then Dr. Coconut start. And then you can see it's about to send the RTP. And it does that. And once I teleport, it says now the size of the queue is 1, which means there's one teleport it's gotten. Alright, now it's teleporting, and we should get sent to our next one. It'll automatically, automatically respawn. I've also got like an auto relog mod, just in case. Also gonna turn it off now, and I'll show you what it does. Oh my days. Over here there's a new file, and it's got like all the, the teleports, also the time, and the death. So now the mod was done, I set up two instances of Minecraft, both with the mods installed. Before I show you the data, I'd like to point out some ethical considerations. So firstly, the tools that I've used to make this video do not give me an in-game advantage, but all teleports were conducted while I was AFK. And secondly, no block data is captured when I teleport, and only location and biome information are stored. Lastly, I'd like to note that this experiment is purely statistical. I started the game every night from the 2nd of October to the 8th of October, which took a total of 144 hours. However, only 60 of those hours were spent AFK collecting data. I died a total of 96 times while AFK, disconnected 6 times, and failed a further 7,878 RTPs. Failed RTPs are if I got teleported to spawn for a server update or any other reason that may have caused me to get teleported to spawn or for the teleport to cancel. There were a total of 20,553 teleports at around 337 teleports per hour. During the whole period, I had teleported over 1,752,452 kilometers of distance. I was teleported to the plains biome the most, with 85% of teleports ending up in a plains. Second was the forest with only 2.9% of teleports landing there. As you can see, the plains biome has an overwhelming majority of the teleports, but this does not indicate that the RTP system is not random, because vanilla Minecraft biomes are not equally distributed. I am about to show you what has been the better part of 60 hours of work. This is a heat map of random teleports on Donut SMP in all regions. You may have already noticed the massive clump of teleports near the center. I'll talk more about that once I switch over to a scatter plot of the teleports color coded by region. Before we talk more about the data, let me help you understand the plot's layout. There are six regions displayed on the plot, each with a different color which can be checked in the legend. The horizontal axis represents the x-coordinate in Minecraft's coordinate space, and the vertical axis represents the z-coordinate. There are ten concentric circles behind the data, each gap representing 25,000 blocks, or meters if you will. They start at 10,000 blocks all the way up to 235,000 blocks, just over the world border of 225,000 blocks. I'm going to go through each region first, starting with Oceania, coloured red. 
You'll notice that the Oceanian region is shaped like an upside down L in the southwest quadrant of the world. There are two visually distinct parts of this region as you can probably see. The top part's teleports are more dense than the side, and if I colour the points by the time, you can see that most of the side's teleports were performed much earlier, and that the later teleports were mostly within the top part of the region. Next, let's have a look at the North American regions, which are placed on the south side of the map. Firstly, you can see that it is very possible to get teleported close to spawn, and many of the teleports are within the 10,000 block concentric circle. Dr. Donut said this in the same video, and now we can probably confirm it with this data. It's just really, really, really unlikely for you to RTP to the small area, but it's just as unlikely for you to teleport to the middle of the map as it is for you to teleport to this small area over here in the map, for you to teleport to this small area over here in the map. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference what coordinates you put your base at. There's also an area of this region with a higher density of teleports and areas on the border with less teleports. However, I'm not sure why this happens. In the west region, there's not much going on, but I did travel to the border to see what happens. Alright, so this is the border of, of Oceana and NA West. If we go into see it teleports us to NA West, I go back. And now I'm in uh, Oceana. So on the scatter plot, we are around here at 72, 73k here around. Oh, and if you've made it this far into the video, it would mean so much if you could like this video and subscribe to my channel, and you'll also get notified when I upload another video like this. Now we'll be heading to the European regions and having a look at the scatter plot. In the EU central region, there are four distinct parts on the scatter plot. The first part is these teleports right on the spawn point. They are invalid teleports that weren't filtered properly, so they should be disregarded. There's also this big mass that fills up the majority of the region, all with teleports distributed randomly. There are these two areas in the corners of the world belonging to the region, but they are smaller and have a lower density of teleports than the bigger part of the region. If I switch over to colour the points by time, you can clearly see that the points in the smaller areas are all early and never later. In the Asian region, there are many similarities with the teleport distribution from EU Central. There is a large area that has most of the teleports contained within it, with an acceptable random distribution. There is another region on the side with less teleports just like what we have seen in the European and Oceanic regions, but again, I'm not sure why this happens. If we switch over to colour by time, unlike the other regions, the less dense teleports don't happen earlier or later, and the time value seems to be unrelated to the location. That's going to be the final region I'll have a look at. The rest of the regions are unimportant or don't have any interesting parts to them. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment and I'll try my best to respond as soon as possible.